you, you we got to be at a place in relationships where you can't expect your mate to do something for you that you are not willing to do for yourself. But more importantly, that you can do for yourself <laughs> and build that out. Now, it's a it's a blessing if they come to the table and they cho- choose to do that. Yeah. But oftentimes we put these unrealistic expectations upon our mates. And when they don't fulfill that, then you got tension and you got problems. And then y'all not talking to each other for days and you sleeping on the couch and not coming home. I'm on a journey to discover, uncover and recover love. Now, as a national playwright, I've penned dozens of shows about relationships. As a filmmaker, I've documented the most beautiful committal of lovers at weddings. And as a divorcee, I know firsthand the brevity of marriage and the pain of its loss. I'm the Terrace R. Whitfield, and welcome to the Dear Future Wifey Podcast. Welcome to the Dear Future Wifey Podcast. I'm your host, the Terrace R. Whitfield. Hey, let me tell y'all straight up. I am so excited to have this Oh, these guests in the studio today, because, man, we about to keep it real. Uh, this brother is a senior pastor of Cross Point Bible Fellowship in Dallas, Texas. He's also the CEO of Promise House. It's a youth homeless shelter, so I'm really fond of, I have a strong affinity for the youth, so uh, we're going to be doing some work together with them. Uh, he serves on numerous boards, Minnie's Food Pantry. He's the president of One Church, One Child. Like, his whole way he set up his life. Uh, parallels with me and so I, I love his outreach and his efforts his wife Diane is so so dope man without further ado let me just welcome to the podcast pastor no we're we gonna I, I said I didn't want the pastor to show up I wanted Charles so I want <laughs> welcome to the dear future wifey podcast Charles and Diane Wolford Hey, what's up man what's happening thanks for having us boss oh uh, yeah we've been hey, having fun fam now, Charles and Diane? Yes. Because I'm going to call y'all Charles and Diane, not past and first lady. Please right. do. Amen. Yeah. Now, on the Dear Future Wifey podcast, we keep it lit. That acronym stands for Living Intentionally and Transparently. Mm. Now, see, I know y'all always keep it real, but I want y'all to keep it extra real on the Dear Future Wifey podcast. All right? All, All right. right. So, so do I have y'all's uh, agreement that we just going to keep it lit? Keeping it lit. All people. right. We're going to keep it lit. Now... Pastor, oh, uh, they call you Pastor. I got to get used to not calling you Pastor. Charles, we had a conversation um, that sparked me wanting you to come on the podcast. But before we get into that conversation, I just want to definitely thank y'all for participating in the Black Love Matters event uh, this past weekend. Y'all counseled each couple. Y'all had a one-on-one with them. Uh, they enjoyed it. And the one thing that they came back and told me is that they said, man, you're right. They, they real. Like we, we like them. They keep it real. So I, that's what makes ministry most effective is when you actually get down and relate to people. And I appreciate y'all so much for extending that time and allow me to interrupt y'all date night on this past Friday to speak wisdom into these, uh, Young couples. Absolutely. It so was our thank pleasure. y'all so Th- much. And thanks for having us. Yeah. So do you remember the conversation we had the other day? Man, I do. Yeah. So we had a conversation, and matter of fact, you tell us, and we're gonna, I'm going to let you tell them the name of this episode. Um, so our conversation was around, you know, the trouble that couples find themselves in, and uh, one of the things that we started sharing was talking about how couples have unrealistic expectations, and they come into these relationships where they – put their mate on a pedestal and they have, you know, all these grand ideas about yes. what the relationship's going to look like um, and what their mate's going to do for them. <laughs> and I just basically said, and this is kind of a premise uh, through many engaging experiences with Diane and I, is um, you, you, we got to be at a place in relationships where you can't expect your mate to do something for you that you are not willing to do for yourself. But more importantly, that you can do for yourself <laughs> and build that out. Now, it's a, it's a blessing if they come to the table and they cho- choose to do that. Yeah. But oftentimes we put these unrealistic expectations upon our mates. And when they don't fulfill that, then you got tension and you got problems. And then y'all not talking to each other for days and you sleeping on the couch and not coming home. So that was the conversation. I was just like, bro, you know, we counsel couples and I, all the time and dying in that most of the time. In our counseling session, it has to do with unmet expectations. Yes, 
Yes. So how did you get to this epiphany? I know y'all had some bumps and bruises along the way in order for y'all to arrive. I always say that in order for you to get to this level of a testimony, you have to first been test, tested in y'all area. So give a little background and premise. How long y'all been married? Yeah. So we've been married a total of 12 years. We dated um, for about five before uh, she she said yes and allowed me to. <laughs> She allowed you. Um, yeah, she allowed me. You Diane, know. you allowed me? Yeah, yeah, it was one of them. Yeah. But see, this is the thing, bro. I don't know if I tell you the story how we met. She tried to run me over. What? Yeah, man, she tried to run me over. So, <laughs> you know, that was, that was I don't know man, if it's why you try to run the man over? I really did. That's what he, he said? He was in the way. He was in the way? Hey, bro, yes. So, yeah, she tried to, and she still tries to run me over. Okay. Uh, yeah. Say that? Okay. Yeah. But the epiphany to came turn. about, like else. you yes. know, for Diane and I is, you know, you as a bro, you have some things that you want your mate to do for you. You know, you know, some cats come in. I want you to sex me up three times a day. Yeah. Um, every day for seven days, with, you know, whatever that is. Or <laughs> every day you know, for seven days. Right. Yeah, every, every day, whatever that is. But in a lot and then but or some people have these expectations that, you know, she gonna cook for me every day. Yes. Breakfast, lunch, dinner. Yes. Um and a snack I, in between. And a snack in between, you know, gonna come home. Um, and everything's going to be laid out. And, mm. you know, the real deal, Holyfield hit, <laughs> you know, when Diane's like, you know, I was going to use an inappropriate word. Yeah, um, I said, you, 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 you ain't yeah, the yeah, yeah, N-word, I ain't, I ain't cooking for you every day. No, not and your so, mama. You know, oh, not your mama. Yes, mama. yeah, yeah. So, you know, you're getting your feelings. You, yeah. you, want, you want them eggs and bacon. You want something cooked. So you have to recognize, you know, the gift that you have, but learning, okay, that's unrealistic. So right. I'll let her tell us and that's, that. And that's true because what happens is, is that what we tell a lot of um, couples are going and say to um, the women, especially because they'll end up losing who they are. Yes. You lose who you are and that's a big no, no. Don't yes. lose who you are. Whoever you met on the parking lot getting ran over. <laughs> That's who you're gonna get. Yeah. I still got charges against you for that. You know that, right? Well, fine. You ain't dropping yet. No, I know. I still got restraining fine. orders on it. Oh. And I just want you to know, my papers are still downtown. Okay, because I really thought that's where you were taking me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we went to the police station before we came, and she got nervous. I, she, he finally turned me in. <laughs> what in the world? That's that hilarious. But seriously, though, don't lose women. I'm speaking to more women. Yes. Do not lose who you are. Whoever you, whoever he met, that's who it is. That's who you are. Yes, we do have goals and dreams and expectations of yourself. You have those things, but keep them in there and keep pushing forward for those things. But at the same token, make sure he understands or vice versa. She understands who and what you're all about. Because again, as he always says, you gonna always show your representative at the front door. Of course. Yeah. The representative yeah. always shows up. But in the, after the representative per se shows up and comes in, stick to who you are because who I am is who I am. Yes. God created me to be is who God created me to be. That's right. And don't alter and adjust. And, and the biggest saying is, oh, we'll get married and then he'll change or she'll change. Yes. No. Don't do that. Mm -mm. Don't do no. that. That's a no, no. Don't so do that. when That's you, the expectation. So what, okay, because women tend to have a tendency to also have expectations before they get married. Yeah. So how did you and you know imagine marriage? And and in my situation it was quite my, I had standards of course because from my father and watching him um growing up and seeing what he did as the man of the house, which was to have a job, yeah. changing the oil in the car, washing the car, the yard, doing the yard. So all the things that I saw my father do, those were the standards that I looked for in a, a husband right so um provider you know providing those things and so those are the to me the basics yeah. I'm like those are the basics so anything extra you bring to it okay cool but those are your basics so you need to ladies again make a list of the things that you're looking for you desire to yes. have in that mate and boom Gotta provide it um, and some. So yeah. So 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 he met some of your expectations. Yeah, then. he did. He he met a lot of the expectations for my father, except for one. But after the five years, it became ex it, he met it. What was that? It, it, it takes time. <laughs> what was that, Diane? Okay, keeping it lit. Yeah, we're a blended family. Yes. So my expectations that I had on my list is that if I if God blessed me with the mate that. The, if they have children, mm -hmm. that they need to be 10 and above, age 10 and above. 
because you didn't want no little ones. Right. Because to me at 10 and my daughter at the time as well, I knew at 10, she was kind of self maintenance. I didn't have to worry about (laughs) brushing and combing her and making, you know, those little nuances that you have from a baby, you know, toddler. So I made sure that at 10, that was my cutoff. They was under that. Mm-mm. She wasn't having it. You just wasn't having it. Yeah, she no. wasn't. A guy approached you and he had a kid that's eight. You like, nah. Oh, yeah, you, gonna no. make, you ain't going to make this. She said, no. No. <laughs> and that's what I say. Sticking to it. Stick to it. And I stuck to it. And don't, don't, you know, oh, no, well, I'm being too strict. On it. No. This is what I told God I wanted. And this is what. <laughs> and he said he's going to give me the desires of my heart. So this is what I exactly. want. Exactly. And here it is. He met all of them. And that was just the one in which I was willing to wait. Until my baby's turn, ten. That's and then deep. Said, I do. Yeah. How long did y'all date before y'all got married? It was that five years. Five years. Yeah. Because so my you, baby was not ten yet. So you wasn't you wasn't rushing him at all. You just oh, knew that you was like, I'm waiting ten years. Oh yeah. no, I've been waiting we, five years. We didn't. Mm-mm. It wasn't a rush to it because again, if that's who God had for me, and I for Him, then it, it would happen. It's yeah. gonna happen. You know, it's very strange to see a woman that level-headed that's not like, not saying that women aren't level-headed. It's just that they they say, I want to be married. And if a guy was waiting t- five years to marry them, then your friends are like, what's taking him so long? Why is, why is he, I've been together for five years, he still haven't proposed. And if women were more forthcoming, they would say, no, it's me. You yeah, know, it's me yeah. that, that that's delaying it. Right. It's my Were list. you trying, were you wanting to marry her earlier than that? Yeah, uh, early on. Uh, but then we both recognized that we both had some healing. Yeah, but mm-hmm. even more so than that is, uh, I think for us naturally we were friends. We yeah. just really developed an amazing friendship, which is just important. being able to hang out because we have this mutual agreement that you know we'll have these transparent conversations, these lit conversations, <laughs> yes. yes, and these lit conversations. This is my dude. This yes. is my homeboy. Right. Yeah. And so I'll come in and say, look, this is my this is my dude. I got to talk to you. Yes. And she'll come in and say, I don't need. Charles, Marcus, Wolf, I don't need none of those dudes. I need my homegirl. And yeah. so we go back and forth, and she'll tell me, you know, she met this fine dude. Yes. I'll tell her I met this. And we'll just have open, transparent That's, conversations. Hold on, stop right here. Yeah. Holy Spirit. <laughs> I had a conversation with a friend the other day, and I said, this is my expectation in my mate. I want to be able to talk to my mate and be like, hey, listen, it's this fine girl that, the, hey, I'm working on this project. She's fine. And she asked me to go to lunch. I was tempted, but I didn't. And this, and be able to actually have a conversation without her saying, well, you ain't finna work with her no more. She need to go. You can't, right. and, and just trust the fact that if I'm giving you this transparency, that that's where we connect. Yeah. The right. problem comes when you keep secrets from each other. Yeah. But if you create an atmosphere and a platform where you can actually open up and be transparent and say, hey, this is where I'm weak in this area. Hey, man, hey, listen, I mean, I ain't had nothing in a while. And she said, hold on, it has been about a week and a half, two weeks or yeah, whatever. Let yeah. me go and tighten you up real yeah, quick. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, that's how it should be instead of being like, well, why are you tripping? You should be able to go a whole month without messing with me. And, and then you're like, <laughs> okay, I was thinking I was talking to my boy. Right, and right. Now you <laughs> right. just you Yeah, just and we talked, you know, this is yeah. really my dude. I can hang out with her. She can hang out with my boys with me. Yes. And she's one of the dudes. Yes. And she, she, we just kick it. Likewise, I can hang out with her homegirls. Yes. Um, and, and that's just the transparency yes. that we try yeah. to get to. Um, is, is, is the, it, when we told the couples when we were counseling them, it's the biblical concept of being naked and unashamed. Ashamed. Yes. It's, it's being in this space where we can just, you know, chill and be, be ourselves and, and yeah. just really just, you know, be transparent. So y'all were like that as friends. Y'all got real cool and kept that relationship going. It wasn't like when y'all got married, y'all said, all right, we going to develop this <laughs> yeah. or whatnot. Mm-hmm. Yep. And, and the way we've practiced that, to your point, is we keep our lunch dates. So every Thursday on my calendar is lunch date with Diane because – when I was chasing her and pursuing her, you know, brothers, listen at this. Yeah, you know, we do everything we can try to go take them to lunch while they're at work. Um, but then Friday are our date night. So we have two dates a week. Dang. So Thursday lunch <laughs> yeah. and then Friday evening. Yeah. Because the thing about it, what we what we realize, you know, brothers, we we're pursuing our women heavily and we are doing everything, flowers and all that stuff during the week. And we only think that date night should happen one night a week. But I, well, when I was pursuing her, I would t- ask her to take her to lunch. I would go to her job, take her to lunch. And then in the evenings, we were still. So we keep them both because that's how we started off dating. And y'all been married how long? Uh, Twelve years. 12. Yeah. yeah. And y'all been consistently yeah. doing this? Consistently. Yeah. And and the, and the blessing from that is our whole community knows that. Yeah. So, right. I was gonna say, yeah. So everybody knows kids, family members, 
co-workers. They know Friday, leave y'all alone. They, they know. And Thursday. And Thursday lunch. Because <laughs> co-workers are like, oh, never mind. We got it Thursday. <laughs> yeah. coming to get you. Yeah. 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 So, it's on my account. My secretary, like, she, it's sacred. Yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah, it's Let me tell y'all something. That is absolutely beautiful. It's like when you start fireproofing your marriage like that, it's like, how can you ever have someone come in? You know what I'm saying? It's, and it's so deep. Um, have either of y'all been married before? I know you've been married before, right? Six times. And she's been married six <laughs> times. And you, she's now like, oh, my God. On my list. <laughs> God, hold on. Let me flip this. No, no. <laughs> you was married once. You've never been married before? Yes, I have. You've been married how many times? So both of y'all been married once. So tell me when y'all came into the second marriage, what was it? Because it's interesting because I think that there's so much power in a database of knowledge when you step into a second marriage after coming from a first one. If you've done the proper healing and you've done the 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 process before the promise and said, all right, let me go ahead and look at this list again and say, this is what I need. I'm not compromising from this. It's not a want. This is a need. And this is what my expectations are. And this is what I desire. Keeping in account, of course, unmet expectations or unrealistic expectations, but to say, this is real. This is what marriage looks like. What did y'all take away from your previous marriages into the, the, in the uh, what knowledge did you take from the previous marriage into the marriages y'all have with each other? Well, for me, uh, that's the, uh, who I am. Not to lose who I am. Your identity. Because in that one, it was mother-in-laws and stuff and whatnot, yeah. you know, trying to mold you and change you to someone that you weren't trying to be or who you didn't want to be <laughs> or who God didn't call you to be. Um, but just, yeah, that was my main thing, just trying to be someone I wasn't. Not losing who you were. Mm -hmm. What yep. about you, Charles? Yeah, so I think the 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 bringing into the expectation conversation is – is again just the most relevant relevant thing to me is making sure I understood who I was as well. Yes, that um, she didn't complete me; she complimented me. Mm, mm, That's mm. good. Say that and one more time. Say that one more yeah. time. She did not completely complete me; she complimented me. That's yes. good. And then the compliment is, um, I have to be able to, you know, self satisfy in some areas because if I'm not satisfied with me, I'm constantly looking for her to fill all these places with me. Yes. Um, it, th there's parts of it that she can and that, she, that are beautiful, but you also have to learn how to make sure you are complete in who you are. Yes. Um, because a lot of brothers I find, you know, they get into these tangles with these women because they're, they're not satisfied with themselves. Women there it do is. It. They're not satisfied yes. with themselves. There it is. And so they're always pursuing this woman or this man to mm -hmm. complete them. Give mm -hmm. me this. Give me that. Yes. Yep. Bro, I'm like, come on, dude. <laughs> yeah. You know, grow up. Dude. Come on now. Let's, I mean, be a dude. Be a yes. real man. Yeah. yeah. You know, and so um, that was probably the thing of me growing up maturing, realizing that I have to be whole in who I am yes. before I can expect a mate to, to make me whole. Yeah. At what point did you know this is the woman that God answered your prayer with? Like, this is this is the one. Um, when she tried to run me over. <laughs> I said, man, a woman who really did, who willing to run me down like this to get me, that's something. You that's know. something right there. She really did just, just knock me down and make sure if I was paralyzed, she was going to pick me up and nurse me back to health. Oh. Um, so that's why I, that was in my head. Yeah, I took that like, Carrie Hilson song. Sometimes love comes around and knocks <laughs> you down. down. <laughs> it knocks you down. Just yeah. get back up. And when it knocks you down. Hey, but I, honestly, I, I really was. I, I, I can say I was smitten from her when I first saw it. It was just hands down. I just, you know, from the moment I saw it, it was it. It was it. What was it about her? I know, I mean, besides, <laughs> besides, she's just so beautiful. What else? Well, that's it. I mean, she was good. I mean, you can say all this. I hadn't heard her talk yet. I didn't. I didn't have any conversations with her brain. I fell in love with who she, her physical <laughs> you, first, and don't, it's transparent. Yeah, you know, we can say all this other stuff. Yeah, but she was just gorgeous. And yeah, so that was the thing that drew me. And then, of course, as we had conversations and got to know her, um, I, I can honestly say that I, I, I pray this for me, and I wish and hope most men can experience this, is whether, you know, she's waking up out of a deep sleep or what have you, she wake up smiling. I'm like, look at this dude. You know, this is crazy. Um, she is the most emotionally stable woman I've ever met. Good. <laughs> emotionally stable. Mm. I've ever met. You know how powerful that is? I'm trying to tell you, bro. So tell me why. Because a, a lot of women may not understand what that really means. I don't know because... It's it's amazing to engage her. Is she's just always stable? She there's no these highs and lows. I don't I don't I don't experience that. And again, I know that's not how every woman is right. made. 
But for whatever reason, God has given her that she's just this stable, emotional, you know, come in. It's just. Diane, let me turn that to you. What is it? Why? Why? What? what, what I what, think. What? Just, well, thank you, love. I appreciate that compliment. Mm. It's so sweet. Do you feel like you're emotionally stable? <laughs> I do. Um, and the reason uh, I would say that is because with maturity, I feel women, once they start maturing and you start understanding who you are and whose you are, um, that it just builds some confidence into you um, and, and assures you that, okay, well, whatever. You know, I'm not going to let you ruin my day. I'm not going to let you steal my joy. I'm not going to let you get me all in my feelings um, to where, I, you know, this thing just go crazy. So, um for women, we are emotional creatures. Yeah. Yes, we are now. Um, don't get me wrong. I have my moments. But to allow another person or your spouse or your boyfriend, girlfriend, to just take that away, that, that just doesn't make sense. It's too much energy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's just too much energy given into that. Yeah. The nonsense. It's like, what are, how did we get here? And why are we doing this? Why are we talking like this? So not to allow that person to steal me. And again, it goes back to like you were saying, confident in who you are. Loving me. Yeah. Loving me some me. Yeah. So Loving me some me. Yes. Yeah. So what's the biggest unmet expectation that people have? What do you think? When, you, when you're counseling people and you're talking to them, we talked about some of the um, high level stuff, which is, the you know the cooking and who you know when you're talking about gender roles who's mm-hmm. going to be cooking who's going to be doing this and all that stuff but from an emotional standpoint when you when you're talking to couples that's actually facing divorce or people that's going through premarital class and they're going through that what do you hear in those conversations that say oh, okay I, I I see where this is going yeah I, I think it's consistent um, we, we call it PMS, power, money, sex. Mm-hmm. So those three are the unmet expectations. Who's in control of what? That's the power in a relationship. You know, um, just as an example, you know, I, I, you know and we, we have fun with it. Um, and, you know, I'll share with my boo, you know, we both can't have dicks. Can I say that? On yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. I say that just because, um, you know, the, the example of which, you know, a couple weeks ago, my beautiful wife decided she was going to try to work on the car. <laughs> Are you showing that picture? <laughs> yeah, I'll show you a picture. I'll show you a video. I'm going so to cool add that into yeah, the podcast. Put, yeah, I'm going to send that to you. So um, I'm cool with that. But she go call me. She sends me a text. Say, um, I poured um, the coolant. wrong. I poured coolant into the stern, the power stern, stern. Uh, reservoir. Yeah, I did. And she, transparent, she told me. I was like, okay, cool. That's what I said, okay, well, don't turn the car on. That's cool. Well, um, as an opportunity, this is a growth opportunity. This is, we talking about expectation. Yes. Um, so when I got home, looked at the car, I said, okay, cool. I got the tools out, and I, sh- I, I walked her through how to, to drain, drain the a reservoir. I didn't do it. I let her do it. Because this, she wanted to work on the car. That's cool. Let her yeah. work on the car. Yeah. And she loved it. You know, when I took her to the auto store, we got all the stuff she needed and what have you. And so as it relates to that, you know, don't, I, you know, the power issues is, you know, when our mates want to learn, just kind of walk with that. Yes. That's an expectation. Money is having these conversations. She, you know, I, I'm, I deal with millions of dollars every day. That yeah. money's not an issue managing it. But when we got together... The release of that is she's much more detailed. If you come home, lights may be off because I may forget. Whereas, <laughs> right. so, so expectations of who pays the bills. So some people say, well, I think it should be the man. No, she manages the money in the I, house. I think the person who's best at it. it exactly. Right. So it. some people get those expectations. Well, no, it's me. I, should, I make more money than you. That's no. not what this mm-hmm. is about. It's not about That's that. Not. And then the expectations of sex. You know, again, as we started the podcast is some people think, you know, I should be knocking it down every day, three Seven. times a day. Yeah. And so you have to level set those expectations. You And we call that in, in couples counsel, what are the rules of engagement? There it is. You have to start with what are the rules of engagement? And you got to learn each other's cadence of life. And, we, you know, it's a rhythm of life. Of what does that really look like? So that would be mine. What would, you know, I would say the same. Your PMS is um, the power thing is his example of me uh, working on the car. Um, well, he, I mean, you might know, but unbeknownst to him, it was joy for me. Yeah. It was joy and excitement for me because of my how I grew up with my dad. Mm-hmm. 
and watching him do those things, him allowing me to watch and telling me because he knew that you're, you're going to be single for a while. So until then, learn how to take care of your car. That's when good. the oil needs to be changed, our tires rotated, all of those things. So that right there was pivotal for me. So, was that your first time doing that, trying to fix on the car? Yeah. In your whole life? Yeah. You just decide to do it now? Yeah. <laughs> doing but yeah. you know let them make it and so you just you know those are those are those are bonding experiences and now it's, you know i i you know deal with cars all the time that's my hobby that and now exciting. she said uh let's once you bring a car home and let's restore it you know i got a truck i'm restoring all this that stuff. would be dope though yeah. so I, it's something we that would be together. dope yeah. yeah if y'all yeah. take an old car mm-hmm. you see y'all was married <laughs> And so y'all was recent. Y'all take an older car, make it a significant date. Yeah. Whether it's an age of your parents or something like that, a car yeah. in that time or your own birth year and restore that bad boy. That would be nice. Yeah. 66 Corvette. Yeah. yeah. Ooh. So, she yeah. said a 66 Corvette? Yeah. You're going to do it? Uh, anyway, <laughs> time for commercial. Let's see commercial break. Is this the commercial break button right here? It's a 66 Corvette. You, so, Diane, why you like these fast cars? <laughs> yeah. You, you uh, like these fast cars. I don't know. I always just like fast cars. I think it's Prince, his thing. Little his red little Corvette. Red Corvette. Red I just saw it. Because your car is red, right? Yeah. You got a red Corvette. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. I just always like Corvettes and speed. <laughs> and 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 this is this is thing, bro. You got to ride with her. And you talk to me. You tell you how much, <laughs> how good of a man I am. Once you ride with her and you come back, you be like, I ain't never doing that again, ever. <laughs> Everybody that. who ride with her be like, what in the no, hell just, I no. mean, what just happened? No, that is so fake news. But, um, she be gone, she be flying and bro, cutting in. It scares me. I'm doing, I'm trying like to Like a little 18-year-old boy no, driving. Yeah. No, so so she, anyway. she come home telling me the people she done raced from work to home. Okay, Every but day. in all, <laughs> what happened, uh, what, a couple of Fridays ago when you were driving it? But still, it's not every day. You can't be racing no, but, but Corvettes but and Mustangs. Exactly. And, I don't race against my own. 67, 67 uh-uh. 35. But, but all Jerry, the time. Seriously, he got to witness on what people do to me. Because they'll pull up on the side yes. and zzz, zzz. Yes. And he'll be like, you ain't going to just punk me now. You're yeah. just not going to handle me. Well, yeah. And so in this last one, this guy was in this big old truck, and he had the windows down. He had his phone ready to record it and everything. And he just and you, 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 had, you had to pull up on him? And, no man, he, I ain't gonna. He, man, I ain't gonna do that. He's, yeah. he's anxious. He's wanting us to no, do this. No, yeah, he wouldn't but, do it. No, no, he wouldn't. You so, let him handle you. Let him handle you, Charles. Yeah, he handled me. Yeah, he did. So yeah, I ain't gonna be doing all that. Hopefully, he didn't see my plate and then well, that that one ain't gonna do yeah, that. Yeah, he's scared. He's scared. Yeah. scared. Yeah. So she, anyway, she's she gonna go redeem y'all when yeah, she see I'm, him down the road yeah, again. I'm you let her see that truck again. She gonna take off on him. She gonna bring it on. What you be doing when she be when you're in the passenger seat? She be racing people. I rarely ride in the passenger seat with her. I yeah, drive. He's always, yeah. He's like, he, I'll drive. I, you know, that's, yeah. That ain't going. Was yeah. that ever an expectation? Who drives? Like, if y'all go on a road trip, do you always be like, well, I'm going to drive. I'm the man. <laughs> no. What the, well, I mean, well. well, the first time she, the, when, when, when she got the Corvette, we were, we were going to Kansas. And I, she's driving. I'm in the passenger seat. And you, in the chairs, I hear this. Shoo, shoo, it's just these noise. It's flying. And so I come up out of my sleep. <laughs> We doing 140. She racing an I Rock Z on the highway. Wasn't racing. Diane. The I Rock and I decided that we need to get where we needed to go. Bro. So we partnered up and we got where we needed to go. That's a story. That's a story you sticking to. Yeah. Y'all partnered up. We did. He's like, you ready? You, where are you trying to go? I'm here. Okay, and we did it. Well, was she going 140? Yes. 140. Bro, she was rolling. But we got there <laughs> in one piece and it was great. So, I love it. I love it. Yes. That, that excitement. But, yes. but this is all you got to do. Ask our children oh my God. or any of our friends, what is it like riding in the car with Diane? And that's it. That's I, it. I only have to be there. They're going to they, they they testify. It's going to be half and half. We hear a lot about communication when it comes to relationships. Uh, I want y'all to weigh in on that. That seems to be the biggest issue that couples have or those even getting ready to be in a relationship? Yes, big issue. So communication. I am a writer. I love to write out everything that's in my head. <laughs> so, you said everything. Everything that comes to me yeah. at that time, it, I'm 
You're going to write it. Um, yeah, writing it down, typing it up, whichever. And um, usually maybe after a conversation we've had or something that pops up that happened and in order for me to remember, I have to go ahead and write it out and talk about it because nine or 10, he's not in my presence. And so we'll need to talk about it. So I'll go ahead and type it all up, send it to him. He's verbal. So he will verbally express whatever the concern or the issue or what have you um, at that time. Um, unlike myself, I need to write it out. So yeah. I don't, it don't come out. Like wrong, hot. Yeah. yeah, you know, because you funky work town. Here. It comes out funky town. Yeah, that's you know, that's funky town right there. Yeah. Fort Worth. She yes. represents funky town. Yes. Very, well. Fort Worth. very well. Very well. Very well. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. I know I'm in trouble when I get a three page letter. I'm like, Jesus, help us. Yeah. So it might be three pages. So we but. we didn't get ready to have fellowship. That's right. What it fellowship. Is. Exactly. Fellowship. So that's my way of communication. Uh, with him and then that sets it up for us to be able to come to the table and sit and discuss these issues or concerns that um, we have or that I may have and like he will just verbally put it out there and we talk yeah, and so and so this is the thing though in communication we tell couples be okay with each other's different communication styles. styles yes and so That's you important. know she she's a written communicator I'm verbal and one is not better than the other. No. Right. And once we start level setting, we have those conversations with each other. Once we know how that individual communicates, then we can, you know, really have some dialogue. So I have to give her, uh, when I give my three-page letter, um, I, we got to sit down. I know we got to talk through it because I know I'm in trouble. And so we go through those things and give her an opportunity to voice it, you know, uh, on paper. And likewise, when we need to chat, I verbally kind of, share with her and so but in in that in that exchange one of the things we say that we also have different processing systems yes. of how we receive information how we right. communication mm -hmm. so yes. um and, and this is not a negative on anyone right um you know just give me an example brother stay with me Come on. um so this is an example as far as processing i can say oh, Boo, God. um what you want to eat for dinner tonight uh-oh uh-oh here we go the tears is like yeah Silence of the lamb. Yeah. I'm like, okay, um, come back maybe 15 <laughs> minutes. Uh, babe, what you want to eat? Nothing. And so it's not that she's ignoring me. I've learned she's processing. Yes. So, I, you know, we sh my wife has a slow processor. Yes. And that's not a negative thing. Right. It's just the reality of how she receives information. Because you know what she think about, Latarius? So what I have for lunch today yes. and then what I'm going to, we're going to cook, we're going to have potluck tomorrow. Yes. And then I'm decide, I'm going to cook lasagna tomorrow for dinner. And so she's processing everything. And she, if we go out to eat, what am I going to dress up? What am right. I going to wear? If we're going to get this. And or the whole through, week. The, the whole yeah. She go through the whole thing. So I have to give her that space and grace to say, okay, I know she's going through it. So I'll put, <laughs> I'll, I'll fling it out there. What you want to eat? Now I just got to walk away just because I know it ain't no expect. I can't have no expectation. She's going to say it. <laughs> Um, and that, but that's her system, and I yes. got I got to appreciate that. Versus me, I can you know I well, make a decision real I, quick. I, I want to I want some chicken. Yeah. I can, you know, we'll get some you know uh, uh, some Henderson or something. You yeah. know, we, you know that you just put that out there. Yeah. So um, you have to appreciate that and don't make that a negative. Right. That you know because you could be annoyed. I could be annoyed that she's ignoring me or she's not you know responding to me. Right. That's just her processing right. system. And appreciate that, and then vice versa. You know, um, you know, she has to appreciate my process and somehow I get information. Right. So we just we teach couples to value and appreciate, you know, how each other, how the other mate communicates. Right. Um, because it makes a world of a difference. Yeah. And, in, and to add to that, with time in the relationship. You start you, changing. I, right. Yeah. I become a quicker processor. Yeah. When saying like, oh, well, I want to do go to Chick-fil-A or go, yeah. you know, wherever. So when does that happen? <laughs> What'd you say? I have. What? Huh? I do. She I, says quicker. Huh? It may, it it may have been, quicker. It might have been 20 minutes. Now it's like 18. Oh, my bad. Yeah. Right. You ain't giving credit for the yeah. extra two minutes. Thank you. Thank you, LaTaris. <laughs> extra so, two minutes. Yes. I'm processing quicker now. Yeah. Okay. Which actually happens because once, nice you, <laughs> once you get with somebody and y'all, you know, been with each other so long, then y'all start kind of just merging. Mm-hmm. 
the weaknesses become the other person's uh, strength right. and all that, and you start shifting shifting stuff. So that is very true. That's what I think is the really dope thing when you when you're talking to couples. What else they talk about when you start talking about communication? What is the the main issue? What's the hurdle? What's the obstacle? Especially when you're dealing with somebody who just don't want to talk. Like, have you ever dealt with people that you're trying to communicate with, or do y'all even have that? Y'all just don't talk. Y'all just don't want to open up. Be like, what's wrong? Uh, nothing. Yeah, we've come across across couples who one of the other is just doesn't talk. But you're like, okay. And so I'm thinking because I like to write it that okay, well, you know, I'm the writer, so feel free to write to write it out to her help? or to him. Do, you do know, they, do they so take that advice. I think they have. I, you know, but I, I mean, that's my advice to them that, yeah. you know, you're not saying anything. So go ahead and write it out. Yeah. It's OK. Yeah. And and the other part is, is, is we realize you tell couples you can't conquer what you're not willing On to confront. Mm -hmm. You cannot conquer what, what you're, you're not, not willing, willing to confront. confront. Yes. And you have to you have to be willing to talk through those things. And if you go into a shell and you shut down, that's, that's it. Um, you can't get it's, no growth out of yeah, it. There's no growth. You got to yeah. be willing to. To face it head on and work through it, and it takes time. Yes, you know what we, we were telling the couples this weekend, and um, what I tell men, um, particularly relates to Diane, because we met each other late in life. Um, I'm I'm fascinated by the gift of God that that I, that I have in front of me, and that is, I, I want to learn something new about her every day. And so, part of you know learning about her. Stop right there. <laughs> this Joker said. I want to learn something new about her every day. Every day. Every day. Because you understand, like you said, y'all met each other later in life, yeah. and she has X amount of years before you ever laid eyes on her. And yeah. there's mm -hmm. a story. There's a there's a journey. There's some Way successes. Way before me. And there's all this stuff. Yes. That, yep. and, and, and we... The unfortunate thing that people do, they say, well, that's a past. I don't need to know about that. Right, All I need right. to know is now and what we got together. And that's oh, they, so unfortunate. Oh, they assume they know their mate already. Yeah. You know, yeah. I'll, I'll talk to couples. I say, so, you know, it's crazy. I do on a scale yeah. of one to ten, how well you think you know mate? mate. I know a, a ten. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the, another be no, a nine. I said, okay, so, you know, this is before pre-married, uh, before they get married. Yes. I say, so what side of the bed they like to sleep on? <laughs> do they like the toilet paper rolled over the top <laughs> or the bottom? So you don't know them, yeah. But so tell me, tell me, and those tell become me, issues what, later. Yes, they sure do. What was their kindergarten grade teacher's name? They be like, mm -hmm. I don't even know that. That's that important, that's, but that's not true. So when I say I want to learn about her, I will ask her questions about what it was like for her in kindergarten. I did not have the pleasure of meeting my wife's father, and so I have to vicariously get to know him through, through her. her. And right. so we'll uh, we'll have these conversations, yeah. and she lets me walk through. I did not get a chance to see her. Um, when she was doing gymnastics and when she was in high school. Do I do gymnastics? Look at you. Look at <laughs> That's why she loves dance. Dance is a ministry, man. Yeah. So, um, but be inquisitive about your mate. Right. Because here God has put, there's only one Diane. Her DNA is unique. She is wonderfully and fearfully made because of what God did with her. And so... I have to be in awe of what God has done. And so I learn about her every day. I just I have know. to be in awe oh, yeah. with what That's God it. has done. Yeah. Yeah. You know, when we say these wonderful scriptures, like I am beautifully and wonderfully made and all this type of stuff <laughs> and the workmanship of God. Yeah. And, but we're not really in awe of what God blesses with. Yeah. Like, I, I mean, you cool. I don't want to blow your head up. So right. I don't, we do that stupid stuff to say, I don't want to blow your head up. And because no. and, if I start telling you that, you're going to start feeling mm -hmm. yourself. Yeah. Now, how in the world, what kind of disservice are you doing for your, for your mate, your partner to not be the biggest cheerleader, to sure. not right. be the biggest source of affirmation in their life out of sheer fear that they're going to think they too much for you. Mm, that is, crazy. that is crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Nope. And we, and we pick up, we pick up, we pick our mates apart and we tear them down. Um, as it relates to expectations, we tell them this is what God does for us every day, Latarius, is he zeroes out our account. Mm -hmm. what, it, what we say, new mercies we see every, every day. Every yeah. day? Every day. Um, so why not new mercies every day with your mate? New mercies right. you see. I get a chance to get to know her and see her just a brand new day. Um, so that's a fascination, just asking and getting to know. She should catch you staring at her. Yes. Um, and just being <laughs> yeah. a fascination. She's like, what are you looking not, at? Not, not, I'm, just, I'm just admiring the workmanship <laughs> of God. <laughs> but you, you better pray. She's not saying, I hope this nigga dies. <laughs> just She's just staring at me. She, I, die. Yeah, just, I, why, why is he even breathing? <laughs> that's, that, you don't want that stare. You're like, 
Why is he still breathing? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'd probably be saying stuff I shouldn't say on this podcast. <laughs> no, you know. I'm you sorry. say everything you're supposed to say. This I is apologize. This is the safe place. Lord, forgive me. I'm sorry. Is, but, but you don't want that <laughs> stare down. And why is he breathing? That, right. But no, it should, you don't want that. <laughs> he's talking about, I put, that, I put that in his drink for a reason. Right. I ain't kicked right. in yet. He ain't done. He ain't done. What is he going to take to get rid of him? <laughs> um, just staring like this. But really be in, just in fascination. And ask those questions. Yeah. Get to know you know, their high school, and, and be open and transparent, just yeah. getting to know. Just yep. be, just be How important is it to talk about past relationships with that person? I think it's very important. Yeah. You know, it's very important just to talk through them. Right. If, you know, know who you are, just don't be intimidated by, exactly. you know, the past relationships. Yeah. They are in the, the past. past. Yes. Um, right. But, you know, just use that as an exercise just to talk through what that was like. Yes. Right. Because you know, this is the reality is um, she was attracted to him or her they were trying for, for something. Yes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So what was it? You ain't the best dude or the best woman <laughs> right. that ever come around, bro. Right. You know, don't fool yourself. <laughs> Please don't. You know, don't just, flatter just, yourself. Just, do yeah, not. Come on, man. Really? Right. Yeah. And people be scared to have those conversations. They do. And yeah. it's it, we have eyes. Yeah. We both have eyes. You forget, and, though. And, and, and I, find, I find that funny, too, with some couples. Like, you can be watching a TV show and... and Oh, he is fine, or he is attractive, or, yeah. and they get mad. And you're like, <laughs> it's not like I'm gonna walk out the door and going to see go, them, go right? Chase them. You know, right. So that was one of one of the first things that we encountered together was like watching these shows, and I was like, because I love, well, I have a list, um, but uh, <laughs> she got a list. Boris Kojo, um, L Cool J. So you know, all my ones I like, yeah. you know, it wasn't like an issue when I they would come on the screen. And it's like. Oh my God, that's my dude. You know, yeah. and he knowing that yeah. she ain't, gonna, ain't like she gonna walk in the door and he there. But you know, it's okay if he yes. looks, if she looks, it's okay because what that that to me speaks volumes because he knows I'm comfortable with yes. who I am. Yes. yes, and love me some me as I keep repeating. Yeah, and I know he that makes me reassure me that um, he's comfortable with who he is and. And um, that I love him dearly. But, yeah, I mean, it just, to me, it just builds each other up that knowing that you, that y'all are comfortable enough to, to do those type of things. Because, yeah. um, again, when you don't speak, it don't make it go away. No, it don't. You know? It doesn't. <laughs> you're like, hiding it. You hide it. Like, and then that's where the ooh, devil gets the biggest yes. glory is when you start hiding yes. it. And you can't talk about it. Mm -hmm. You start keeping secrets. And then yep. you start having these adulterous relationships. Exactly. Just talk. Just talk, talk it out. It. Yep. Yeah. Just get it out. Yeah. Get that out your system. Like, woo. Yeah, this dude tried to holler today. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. You know. <laughs> so. And that's funny. And you can laugh about it. So, it, it, I mean, it's, it's, I have a whole yeah. little envision. I, I envision, <laughs> like, my 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 next wife, we just going, we going, we going to talk. Enjoy trip, life. Laugh. Enjoy life. life. Enjoy like, it's, it. it's, 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 it's people taking life too seriously where if you can't laugh with the person you said I do to. Yeah. Yeah, what's, what's, what's the point? Like, why yeah. Why are we here? And that should be a part of the marriage vows is, is being able to laugh and be yeah. transparent and honest and stuff. Yep, um, that's it. We talked about, um, we said something the other day, Charles. We talked about um, uh, keeps no record of wrong. Yeah. First Corinthians 13, love keeps no record of wrong. That's that's that whole zeroing out there. Yeah, you know? that's that, yeah. Because, you know, couples keep lists, or mm -hmm. the mate will keep a list of all the yes. stuff, you know, and, you know, women are good at keeping lists. <laughs> They'll bring up stuff that happened six years ago, but like, bro, what happened? Said, what happened? But, you remember? But you remember you was remember? wearing that blue shirt, yeah, yeah, you walked yeah, in the yeah, door, yeah, yeah, you yeah, took yeah, off your loafers, yeah, and then yeah. you said, you'd be like, yeah. God, I remember what I wore yesterday. Yeah. You're right? telling me what I wore six years ago. Exactly. You got to zero out those accounts. Yeah. And, and and that's, again, that's just given an opportunity, you know, I forgive you. Yes. It's this opportunity to forgive. Mm -hmm. um, I was watching, I think it was... Um, um, Samuel Jackson, who was being interviewed about his relationship with his wife. Oh. And he said something very profound. He said that um, they asked, what, what uh, has been the success of y'all's relationship? He says, we both have a healthy dose of amnesia. Wow. Mm. That's good. He <laughs> says, we both have a healthy dose of amnesia. And mm. That, you did. that has <laughs> to that has to just be you know th there's some things Ooh. we gotta forgive and forget and like and, and right. keep on moving right because we are not perfect and we both have a healthy, healthy dose, dose of amnesia, amnesia. boy That's that would good. preach yeah because <laughs> we only believe that 
God is the only person that can do that. When right. he says, I cast your sins as far as the east is to the west, yeah. and I don't remember what yeah. you did. Yeah. And we say, are we human? I'm going to remember what you did. Right. Let but it the go. fact that you can actually have the ability to be like, but, well, I, what I believe the way you get to that level is where you don't take it personally, that you take that person. At, when you understand someone, and that's why people's motives have to be right. Mm -hmm. If you know your mate and you know that they're not set up to hurt you, destroy you, or coming to be your adversary like they were sent from the devil, then <laughs> then you don't have to keep that. You go, okay, this is who God brought me into, who God brought into my life to make me better, to right. help us grow, to be purpose driven. And so you don't take it personally. If they do something to you that hurts your feelings or, or causes you, you angst, then you just say, oh, okay. You know, it yeah. ain't no big deal. But yeah. if you like, you, you have been sent to destroy my life, <laughs> then now you need to start keeping right, records right. and tabs and like, like okay, yeah, right. this, you, you keep on doing yeah, this. Yeah, this is, you yeah. know, so that's, yeah. that's powerful. And that, again, you have to get to a level of maturity as a couple right. to understand each other's motives, intentions, and the purpose that God brought y'all into each other's life for. And, and this is, that's even, this is, what I'm getting ready to say is, is even more difficult to reconcile is if if you in the uh, early stages of your life have these words to come out of your mouth that God sent them to me, for you to walk away from them, you're walking away what God has done. So we got to think through that. And yeah. we got to be careful when we say that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, because this is the thing, is that if they're God sent, you have to be willing to understand that nothing comes to us from them unless it goes through God's hands first. There it is. Quote Dr. Tony Evans. So we got to yeah. be careful. And that when we go through situations with our mates, yeah. we got to be like, you know, this is, this is tough. I don't know how I'm going to make it through this, uh, but give, you know, give the opportunity mm -hmm. for God work to work those things out. Um, this past Sunday, we, we kind of, we were preaching through faithfulness, uh, Galatians, the fifth chapter, Verses twenty two through twenty six talks about the fruits of the, the fruit of the spirit. And one of them is faithfulness. Yes, and faithfulness, as you talk about it, is trustworthiness. Yeah. But trustworthiness is being able to depend on somebody and being able to know that they're trustworthy, they can be trusted. And and um, and we all can probably make statements of having give up on something too soon, thrown in the towel too soon, and and lots of couples, um, lots of individuals. Uh, if we're honest with ourselves, there's relationships that we threw the towel in way too early. Yeah, yeah. Um, because we're not, we were not willing to endure, nor were we willing to have a dose of amnesia to to say, I don't like it. Right. But but God is doing something here, and I gotta be willing to allow God to do both fix them and fix me. Right. That's tough. Yeah. That's them tough. And fix me. It's 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 tough. Yeah. It's tough. I mean, and. Um, Trustworthiness and faithfulness. Uh, that was an episode that um, I did a couple of weeks ago. I said, as I was doing the research on what is the most powerful thing in a relationship, I thought it was love. And, you know, we hear the scripture about love and this love is patient, God's love, all that. But when I recognize why people get divorced and, and, and things happen and unmet expectations is trust. You, you can like love is first of all, it's eight types of love. So you got to first find out how are you loving me? Cause I can be in a relationship. So I love you, but I just love sex with you. So that's the yeah. hero's love. Yeah. Nothing more, nothing less is just sex. <laughs> uh, and when you're not getting sex, you've done fell out of love with that person right. because it was yeah. eros. That's yeah. why I say we have to get really specific when we talk to each other and say, how do you love me? Yeah. Yeah. What do you love about me? me? Yeah. Shoot, girl. I mean, shoot. The way you, man, I ain't yeah, never. Yeah, yeah. You know, and it's like, okay, what else? Right. Man, uh. shoot, man. <laughs> I'm just saying the way you, man. Like, really? That's it? Right. And then, and then, and but when you start finding out the different eight types of love and you start hearing people, you know, you go to your favorite concert and you hear the uh, the celebrity up there saying, I love you. You know, and it's yeah. like, you don't yeah. even know me. What, what is that love? <laughs> and so, Trust is so important because, like you said, <clears throat> that's the only way you can get to that 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 uh, the account being replenished every day or starting at a zero balance and saying, "Hey, listen, all right, yeah, I got a healthy dose of amnesia." Is because I trust the fact that you're not but, here to destroy me. I, I right. trust that that was an honest mistake. Right. If you really knew that that was going to hurt me or or make me 
get in this mood for the last eight hours or whatever it right. is, you wouldn't have done that. Right. You know, I'm checking your intentionality and your motives behind it. And that's so it. that's what I think couples, uh, we really need to understand is to trust. Um, any last remarks you want to leave? I just wanted to add in there another thing that um, is very helpful for um, couples with or without children um, is a calendar, is to sync your calendars um, that Good. was like the best thing that I received from my lovely late mentor, Sister Dr. Lois Evans. Boy, she was a beast, um, boy. Yes. Man, oh, she was Jesus. A beast. Yes. That was just like, I mean, she opened my eyes to so many things because of her and Dr. Evans's schedules. And I was just like, how do you all do it? Yes. And she just said, we think our calendars. I was like, that's it? <laughs> Like, yeah, sync the calendars and everything. And, and, and it sounded like, how would you just sync calendars and that <laughs> fix, you know? But it made so much sense. It makes a lot of sense in knowing, seeing what he's got going on. He sees what I have going on. Then you're able to plan vacations, plan a date, plan who's going to take little Johnny to the soccer game and daycare and what have you. So all those things fit into your council. Couples, please sync your calendars together so that you can be on one accord about what's going on, what's happening, and then that helps with the trust. Yes. And I believe you've said, honey, that um, that's one thing that you asked me, and well, let me see your calendar. They find out what's going on with them. Yeah. Really? Bit, As you do? Yeah. yeah. Because um, this is the thing with dudes, um, high-performing executives and what have you, you know, when you counsel uh, cats or, you know, lo looking at dudes who – who want to be successful, show me your calendar. What do you do? What time do you wake up? Mm -hmm. What's your schedule like? If you open up your calendar and you wake up at 12, play um, Xbox, the, Xbox mm -hmm. to three, yeah. and then, you know, you do nothing. You, that's not going to be successful. <laughs> no. um, so your calendar is going to tell on you it as will. far as what, what is a priority for you. Right. Um, but also just with regards to um, how sacred those things are to you on your calendar. She's on my calendar every week, Thursday, every Friday. That's so Friday. beautiful. That there's like there's no exceptions man. to that. But I then love building it. in it, she, my ad man, syncs my calendar and, and th they talk all the time. So right. when there's family events and scheduling of stuff, uh, there's a there's a there's a, a, a connectivity with that. Right. Um, you know, with our kids, she has my kid. My ad man has my kids' numbers. All of that so that, you know, I, I have to live transparently in yeah. that space yeah. so that, um, you know, people can peek into my life. We yeah. talked about uh, Dr. Lois Evans. We'll be remiss to, for those that don't know, um, they, this wonderful couple were associate pastors at Oak Cliff Bible Fellowship for how many years? Ten years. Ten, Ten years. <laughs> and so they were really close to Evans. Yes. And um, I know that was a huge loss for y'all yeah. to yep. lose this champion in the kingdom of God, yes. uh, Dr. Lois Evans. I didn't know. When I went to that funeral and I heard all her accomplishments, I yes. was like, this has to be the most humble woman I've ever seen in my life. Oh, yes. Absolutely. I never knew that she was a beast like oh, that. Yes. I never knew. Oh, yeah. Beast behind the scenes. And I cried so hard because I didn't know. Mm. And I'm, I'm going to tell you something yeah, really yeah. transparent, and I'm trying not to get emotional about it. So... People that's watching the podcast, I would produce the Christmas and Easter productions for the last, for five years at Oak Cliff Bible Fellowship, two plays a year. And I remember at the end of a lot of the performances, I would be waiting to talk to Dr. Evans, but I would pass over first lady to get to him mm. and she'll be standing there she's like oh this is so wonderful this play this is this and she'll be talking mm. to me and i'll be like yeah yeah thank you thank you so much but looking to find an open mm. space mm. for dr evans and i cried at the funeral mm. because i was trying to get to him mm. and i should have been talking to her mm. and good. how powerful she was i was like oh she's my god i said god teach me to see yeah. i said i don't ever want to miss those opportunities again yeah this lady was a beast mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah. I'm sitting over here cutting my eyes, trying to get to him. So, yeah. 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 I should have took those moments and was like, pour and, into me. And for her, for Less her development as a, as a new pastor's wife, you know, um, her telling Diane just to be who you are. Yes. You know, these women going to want you to wear hats and yes. stuff. You know, and don't no. don't listen to none of that stuff. No. And because she is authentically who she is. Yeah. Yes. Look, is look how beautiful she yeah. is. You know, she just is who she is. Yeah. And, um, I, I think the gift to her was mm -hmm. being mentored by Mrs. Evans yes. and me by Dr. Tony Evans. We are 
forever yeah. eternally indebted to yeah. them yeah. for what they did for us, but to our children, uh, the blessing of our kids getting, yeah. getting being able to grow up in that ministry yep. yes. and see what that was like. There's yep. there, you know, that will forever um, in my mind be the greatest gift. I don't know why God thought enough of us to let us do that. That's just, that. Right. when I think about that, that is amazing. So what's the nickname yeah. that Dr. Evans always said to you? He called me the hood pastor. Hood pastor. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's it. He ain't lying though, boy. You the you the you the hood pastor. He call me the hood pastor. I call yep. you the thug pastor. Yeah. <laughs> the thug pastor. But listen, man. Thank y'all so much for joining the Dear Future Wifey podcast. Thank y'all for pouring this amazing wisdom into our listeners. Uh, I just appreciate y'all, and I've taken a lot of. Uh, nuggets away from this like I definitely want to be intentional about date nights with my with my wife you said it best that we do all this work trying to get them and then we get them we get lazy and be like all right girl I mean gosh we, we ain't gotta go out every week are you serious like every week like girl I see you all day <laughs> I know. like at night I don't yeah we can just have a date while we lay in this bed watching tv this nope. is a date don't just account for something Mm-mm. you know but to be like that and be purposeful I'm gonna I'm gonna have to take that from yep. y'all uh, I it. appreciate that. And we told the couples that that y'all yep. got to date each other continuously. Because everybody, they kind of like, almost look like. Like, uh-huh. really? Yeah. It just it sounds like, so foreign. Yeah. <laughs> like, ain't that how y'all meet? Yeah. I mean, ain't that <laughs> what he used to do? Y'all used to go out, right? Well, listen, uh, y'all, are y'all, do y'all actually become active on social media? Are y'all active? Yeah. Y'all check your Instagrams and stuff? Yeah. All right. So when anybody want to talk to you, shout, shout out your Instagram or your Facebook. Ooh. Um, you don't even know it. My Instagram is, uh, it's my alias. Uh, Drop it like it's hot for Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> Sparkle 1927. <laughs> Sparkle 1927? Yes. All right, that's an alias. See, she over there hiding. So, Sparkle 1927. So, you uh, said 1927? So, if y'all want to talk, inbox it, engage, ask us some questions, our open book. Um, y'all's church is open. It's open during COVID. Yeah, Cross yep. Point Bible Fellowship Church. With the social distancing in place. Yeah, yeah. VCP.community. VCP.community. So check it out. Come visit. They're yes. dope. The most approachable pastors that y'all ever meet. I love them. Um, they're personal friends. And I appreciate y'all for joining the Dear Future Wifey podcast. Give it up for y'all. We enjoyed this as well. Good job. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> I just want to take a minute to just thank all of you have a whole lot of new subscribers. Um, This in the month of August alone, our channel has grown to 5,000 subscribers. So I just want to thank y'all so much for enjoying this content. Thank you so much for leaving the comments. I try to respond to every comment that people leave, whether I like it, heart it, or actually just respond back to you. But I really, really appreciate your support Continue sharing the videos. Continue going with me as I journey through this thing called love. Dear Future Wifey, this past weekend, I produced a three-couple wedding event I affectionately named Black Love Matters, the ceremony. I'm always in awe of God's sovereignty in my life and the steps he gently takes me through to execute his divine plan. Blessing these couples with a beautiful wedding primarily paid for by me, was God orchestrating the greatest spiritual deposit I could make into our nuptials. As I watched each bride walk down the aisle, I thought of you. Each groom waited at the end of the aisle with bated breath as she ended her journey to receive her. My love, this journey of singleness ends with you, your future hubby. Thank you for listening to the Dear Future Wifey podcast. Remember, be lit, live intentionally and transparently, and don't stop loving. Make sure to subscribe to our Dear Future Wifey YouTube channel. We're available on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and Stitcher. We welcome your support. Simply share our podcast with your friends and family.